Welcome to this uh, exclusive uh, fireside chat to really share learnings of how uh, organizations are trans transitioning to hybrid workplace. Uh, extremely, extremely pleased to have uh, Ms. Vandana Tilwani uh, with us. Uh, Vandana currently heads uh, the HR uh, function for Havas Group in India. Uh, she brings extremely rich experience of over 19 years uh, across industries such as ITS, uh, media advertising and hospitality, and across uh, you know, diverse roles. Um, in her current role, she's responsible for really driving the entire, uh, developing and executing the, the human resource strategy for Havas uh, in India. Um, and uh, really, really uh, uh, so that it delivers to the overall business plan as well as strategic direction of the organization. Um, her, uh, what she really uh, works very deeply in is around succession planning, talent management, change management, organizational and performance management, training, development, and compensation. That's a lot, uh, Vandana. Uh, she, uh, apart from uh, you know the work that she does with uh, with us, she's also uh, a fitness freak in her words, and uh, works out seven days a week. Uh, very, very inspirational with yoga being an integ integral part of a wellness mantra. Uh, just a brief on uh, the Avas Group. It's, uh, it's a French multinational advertising and public relations company. It's headquartered in Paris, in France. It operates in more than 100 countries uh, across the globe and is one of the largest global advertising communications group. Vandana, thank you so much for being here today and we we'll really look forward to your insights. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, quickly, uh, my my name is Navendra Mathur, and while I lead sales and uh, business development for uh, Work in Sync, uh, but I've been spending over the past uh, one year, I've been spending a lot of time uh, helping enterprises uh, really uh, define a return to office uh, strategy. Uh, what I'm hoping is that in the next 60 minutes, uh, we, uh, we have an interesting, insightful discussion. Uh, I am certainly excited uh, to have this discussion with uh, Vandana. Uh, what I would request to everyone who is uh, here today to attend is uh, please do keep posting your questions. Uh, there is a Q&A uh, 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 emoji that you probably see at the bottom of the screen. Please do uh, keep posting your, uh, your questions. And we have some time set aside towards the end to respond to them. Uh, but let the questions keep coming in. in. In case we run out of time, we promise that we will respond to you over an email or in some other form, but we would definitely respond to every question. All right, uh, Vandana, you know, the last one year, uh, and I think it's it's almost exactly one year uh, to the week, if I'm, if maybe not to the date, but to the week. Uh, all of us were compelled in India and uh, across the globe in, in different phases, but pretty much similar timeline. We were all compelled into a lockdown uh, and that brought in significant level of uncertainty and chaos uh, in personal lives, as well as uh, in our in, in at at uh, at a workplace, I don't think any organization had really developed a BCP for such a situation. You know, you have BCPs for multiple other situations. Uh, Vandana is based in Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai is famous for its floods, and I think every self-respecting company in Mumbai has a BCP for a flood situation. But obviously, this was something that was unprecedented, uh, and nobody really had a BCP for it. Uh, all, all of us, uh, and I'm saying including including Move and Sync and Work and Sync, we all had to scramble to figure out how do we how do we remain functional. And uh, I think really what we will delve into in the next 60 minutes is really from the journey uh, in March last year right through till today. Uh, you know how has the Havas Group really uh, transitioned through this through the last one year into a situation where you have. Uh, you know, a certain percentage of your colleagues back in the office, right? Uh, so right off the bat, uh, Vandana, I think the most obvious first question uh, I'd like to ask is, how did you guys, I mean, March and the pandemic hit, lockdown happened. How did the company, how did Harvard's group as a company really react, respond to that situation? Um, yeah, you know, I think I think what's interesting is now I remember 18th of March is when we shut our offices. So literally one week uh, less for a year. And um, I, you know, I remember I, the first thing I remember when we, we decided to, you know, shut our offices was that, you know what, we'll probably go, go, 
you know, home for a week or two weeks, you know, nobody really, I don't think we expected the, the, the pandemic or the lockdown to, to go on for so long. And over a period of time, you know, we would kind of review the situation, you know, and we would say, okay, okay, maybe we need another extension, another extension. And that happened like multiple uh, times during, you know, in, in the initial first few months until until we finally decided that, you know, I think, I think this is going to go on uh, for much longer. Uh, so, so obviously, initially, like I said, I mean, you know, we didn't realize it was such a, you know, it's going to be, you know, such an extended lockdown period. Uh, so I think, uh, I think for us, the biggest thing was, you know, while this, you know, while the situation is happening, at some point, it started to hit us that, Oh, oh God, how, you know, how, how, how are we going to manage our businesses? How are we going to communicate with our people? How is, you know, how is the communication with the clients going to happen? Because, you know, there's a general belief that if you don't meet your clients, you know, you know, it doesn't work. How do you build relationships? There's just so much that, and you have to come together. How do you collaborate? I mean, how do you do things on Zoom, right? I mean, nobody thought that life could actually settle down in the, in the Zoom uh, environment. Uh, but, you know, interestingly, it happened and all of us have, have actually seen that. I think for initially for us, you know, uh, at, at one point we did hit the panic button and we realized when we realized that this was going to go on for much longer. Uh, then we realized that, um, uh, you know, I think it's very important to keep our employees engaged and communicated, commu you know, in, you know, be in touch with them all the time. And so communication suddenly started to increase. So, you know, we were communicating a lot with them on what we are planning to do, you know, to stay calm, you know, this is, this is what we're thinking, or whatever we were thinking about in terms of rolling out. I think the communication significantly increased. So we would talk to them about, you know, what are the revised government guidelines, you know, what is it that we are planning to do? Uh, so we, we make sure made sure that a lot of communication happened with our employees, I think, in the initial stages, just to kind of make sure that they feel that, you know, they're in the comfortable zone. Of course, from, our, from, the, from, a, you know, from an HR point of view or, or a, as an organization, we were also very, very mindful and keeping track of our employees. We de developed a mechanism where we were tracking if there were employees who were getting infected you know, with COVID and then we were reaching out to them and asking them if they need help, you know, insurance, we reached out to the insurance companies, they confirmed that, you know, COVID is part of the insurance. So, you know, those kind of communications and comfort that, you know, we started to give to uh, our employees. Of course, you know, because we are a multinational company and because this was a global crisis, there was a lot of, you know, support, a lot of guidance, a lot of information, communication material that kept coming in to us from the global and the regional teams. So, you know, in, in, in that sense, like, you know, we, we felt like over a period of, you know, months, you know, because we were constantly talking, we created like this core committee, we were on WhatsApp talking about what are we going to do, how are we going to address this. So in that sense, we felt like we were fairly on top of things, you know. So yeah. I, I just wanted to double click on a couple of points that you made around. Uh, uh, so the challenges that you, that Havas faced uh, in managing a remote workforce. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and give us both as an employer, your perspective, as well as an employee, because you were also an employee who was affected, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So give us both the perspectives. So just double click on a couple of points that you made around some of the challenges that you were trying to solve in those yeah initial few months yeah of course i think i think you you know i mean you know like if you even consider a city like bombay right we we have a lot of people who work out of bombay um or anywhere else in and you know like for example in cities like gurgaon and bangalore where we have our other offices a lot of people are not local so they're you know working in uh, shared accommodation so obviously the con the space constraint was was a big challenge for for employees right so for example the houses tend to be small in bombay if some most of them are like you know like for example in bangalore a lot of people come from uh, you know kerala and other other parts of south and you know other cities so their spaces were so small they didn't really know how to manage working in those you know smaller spaces and not all the homes were necessarily equipped with you know, high internet connection, or, you know, for example, we had some of our employees who 
we have because we are an advertising company we had employees who work uh, on art so they use those uh, mac machines they are like those big ones right. so we had you know we had to kind of pack them up and get have them shipped to their homes so that work was because work was happening you know it's not like work had stopped mm-hmm. clients were still insisting on a work uh, to be delivered on time they were in fact in fact expecting a lot more than what we and i'm sure that most people here on the call will agree with me that they experienced the same thing the other thing was you know obviously getting you know pretty much building your work around zoom right which is not that at you know initially it was fun like to do it but at some point it started to get to people just being in front of a screen throughout very little interaction with with people on a face to face basis i think it was burning out um, employees also um, you know so while while you know all this was happening we were still onboarding and inducting new people so then you know how do you in onboard new people uh, into the system so doing that remotely uh, how do you help people with all of those network related issues internet connections so you know, multiple issues you know which uh, which we faced like uh, you know which we then eventually had to kind of address right and as an as an employee i guess that entire opportunity to do your coffee breaks your cigarette breaks yeah. you know uh, uh you know the the there's some terms that have become now almost um, uh you know terms we use every day you know uh, social animals right we all say we yeah. are animals uh, that entire uh, essence of collaborating meeting yeah. brainstorming having a coffee having a joke having a cigarette together obviously every all of that went uh, through the window yeah and uh, it i guess it it kind of led to a little bit of a mental uh, you know mental wellness issue uh, in our yeah. people's time yes uh, what i do also since you are a, a large global uh, organization and we have a few people who are calling in from overseas also are there any perspectives that you heard from some of your global colleagues as you were kind of brainstorming with them on some of the challenges that uh, those markets were facing were they different from india or did they have some other unique challenges uh, you know in the other countries like if i uh, i think some of them but not all everybody ha- yeah i think la- more or less the same like they were still for example your houses are not necessarily prepared they don't you don't have dedicated office uh, you know designated office like i don't have i mean i swear if ever i was working from home then it would be on my dining table my room right nobody really and then you have people your maids walking around there's you know things like that so i think a lot of, in in india Uh, and this was not very different and you know and we've seen enough in enough in more of those memes and videos of you know all those you know things zoom happen bombing, zoom bombing as <laughs> called very interesting very funny actually um but i think um, in the other countries what i saw was there was a lot of government related there will there will a lot, lot of restrictions from the government like right? so for example singapore you couldn't just go to office like we thought like singapore is probably you know initially it felt like you know it's one country that is being able to manage this but you know even they couldn't and but so the government said that you can't go back to office um, our office in singapore like i said even today is not open um then you know like for example china we saw what we saw was uh you know interestingly they were the first ones to actually get back to office because they seem to be uh, able to deal with it much faster and and as you know then you know obviously they they eventually coped with it much better than the rest of the country so i think every country faced very uh, different challenges but i what i saw was there was a lot of like in us in our case we had other problems like for example in in india just the sheer work number of workforce using public transport we knew what could happen if they were all you know getting using public transport what could happen everything would just explode in other countries it was more about what the you know the the, the laws of the country were telling them to do so it was more right. from that point so when did when did uh, when did havas in india uh, actually start putting together and working on a return to office plan yeah and uh, and the you know why is very simple to answer why did you start working because you eventually had to get back but why did you choose that particular time whenever you started working on return to office strategy why did you choose that particular time see because i think by then there was 
so I also want to say why. I also want to answer your why question because there were two things that that really motivated us to get get kind of uh, you know get back to work. I think one of the bigger reasons was we were we were actually getting a sense that our employees were burning out, like they were they were really stressed out at work. And so we said that you know it's not it's not nice because you know is there anything we can do to help them? So we said maybe our offices can be one of the places that people can go to. You know, some days you feel like you really want to get out of the house and and work in a safe environment. You know, let's uh, let our offices be one of those. Uh, second, I think, uh, and, and like I said, I mean, you know, that whole charm of working from home was like, you know, dying away. And we also wanted employees to feel that, listen, we are here, you know, don't get into this, you know, like complete work from home kind of mode. We, wa- we didn't want people to get into that mode. We always wanted people to know that the offices are here because a lot of people were talking about giving away office space. People were feeling insecure. People thought that does that mean it is going to lead to some, uh, you know, staff reduction, salary reduction. So we wanted people to get the confidence that, listen, no, we are here. We have this lease and we're going to be here for the next two, three years. So that also gave employees a lot of confidence that their jobs are also safe. So that was a very important messaging that uh, that we had to do, right? So, uh, and I think we, the reason we decided to come back to office in June is because by then, you know, like the, like we were getting very specific guidelines from the government. There was a lot of protocols being put uh, globally, uh, locally, at various, especially for offices. You know, we saw that our facilities, for example, our offices in Oberoi, in, in Delhi, it is in BLF. There were specific guidelines which gave us the confidence that maybe with a small number, if we start, it might be manageable. You know, so we said let's get into this mode before it gets starts to implode and a lot of people come in and we are not able to manage it. Let's start small, and at that point, it was only ten percent. So we said, let's start so that, you know, we'll be able to manage this better. What kind of learnings can we have once we open the office and see how we can kind of, you know, uh, expand it to when it goes to 30, maybe 50 or maybe 100. Right. So we wanted to start because we really didn't want to get too comfortable at home. Uh, That was a big uh, also one of the bigger things. So, you know, ironically, um, uh, this little fear psychosis that had set into people about, you know, ironically, offices and your home. Are yeah. the two most sanitized places. Yeah. Uh, offices, because you know, as organizations, we would want to keep our own, like we keep our own homes clean, we would want to keep our, our offices also sanitized. I think where the, the largest risk at that point in time was the uh the 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 public transport that you'd have to take for people who yeah. would use public transport. Uh, but people who were using private transport, you know, yeah. Uh, when the first phases of the unlock down happened, you know, starting in the first unlock actually was announced in April and then it kind of got pushed out. Pushed out yeah. uh, when it started happening in June, July uh, timeframe, there was there were some people using private, you know, for example, we uh, were back in our office also in June last year. Yeah. Obviously, with a very, very, very limited workforce, uh, the amount that regulations would allow. But starting August onwards, I've been, I mean, I'm also based in Mumbai, but I've been traveling to Bangalore uh, since August last year. Uh, and I've, you know, people did warn me about taking flight and the airport and public. But I just no, brave that, man. no but you know, uh, uh, Vandana, you know, ironically, uh, these large brands, whether it's an airport or whether it's an airline, they have a lot to lose if something goes wrong. Yes. So they are they are making sure that everybody's following protocol. Their aircrafts, all facilities are sanitized. And touch wood, I've been regularly traveling since uh, August. I'm good. I'm safe. Yeah. But anyway, so let's move on. So return to office, June, July. What really was your strategy? What did you want to uh, really bring together as part of your plan, as part of your strategy? I think the biggest thing for us to do was, you know, give employees the comfort that, listen, this office is probably the second most safe place for you. Uh, And we had to give people that confidence. Now, how do you do that, right? So obviously we, you know, all of those protocols and guidelines, you know, we we had our, we we put everything in place right from, uh, you know, the frequency at which the offices are going to get cleaned and sanitized, which are the areas that need to be cleaned more, 
the marked desks, you know, like from to manage the whole social distancing, including the washrooms, the elevator, and of course the building uh, itself was so well managed. Uh, so, and, and, you know, for example, what kind of, we, we, we gave them very interesting guidelines on what you should do before you leave the house. And so, I mean, you know, it, it, it was very well thought out. And once we, in our minds, were comfortable that, listen, this is something that can work. We were scared, okay? We were really scared. We said one case and then we will, you know, in those days, uh, the BMC would come and shut your office, like if they would come. Through. So we were obviously very scared at that time. Now, we, thankfully, they just ask you to, you know, close your office for 24 hours, sanitize it and all that. Obviously, those days, it was very scary. So um, once we felt like we were comfortable to, to roll out something like that, we did a town hall, right? We, we every location, and we, we got people to come in on the call and we explained to them that, listen, we are planning to maybe, and we told them, we knew exactly what number of people we wanted. It was very small at that time, only 10%. We took them through all of the things that we are going to do. We promised them that this is what we intend to do and uh, opened it out. You know, the CEO was part of it, the respective location heads, they were all there, admin, you know, whoever. And we, I think what we did is we gave them the confidence that, listen, we, you know, and I think they felt like it, you know, uh, comfortable. And then we opened it up. So, you know, like, so, so literally like, you know, right from posters to masks, everything, everything, everything was like, and the communication just wouldn't stop, right? So, you know, uh, at every point we were just, you know, updating them on this is what we are planning to do. This is, this is uh, you know, some, some posters in the office, some mailers. So all that happened. And I think, I think people somewhere did get the comfort people started to pour in, not in large numbers, because we also didn't want people to come in large numbers. We wanted to manage it, you know, and, and, and I think we'll speak about that in some time. I think people were not comfortable taking public transport. So that obviously, you know, kept some of them at home. And we said, we had no pressure. Whoever's comfortable, please come. So there was really never any pressure on anybody. And uh, I, I, I remember you did mention that you also heard the voice of the employee. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So what, right. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> you want to continue? No, no, I, I want you to talk a little bit. Yeah, about no, no. And I'm happy to like share this also because, you know, I remember before we actually went, uh, uh, you know, and opened our offices, we did a small survey and we asked employees like, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of concerns do you have? What would really, you know, bring you back to office? Uh, and, you know, literally, I mean, we had pretty much almost everybody kind of participate. I think, you know, since uh, a large part, large chunk of people are going to use public transport, so let's go easy. You know, let's see what else can we do. And that's when then we started to think about, you know, maybe providing them internet at home, you know, dongles or whatever it is. Um, you know, and we said that let's not force anybody to come to office. Let's just, our offices are there. Gradually, it will pick up. Right. So, you know, um... One of the major product lines that Women's Inc. has is also providing an employee transport solution. Yeah. We had a lot of uh, companies coming and talking to us, just exploring. And the reason I bring this up is the point you made about public transport, uh, that how can they introduce uh, transport services to uh, their employees, just so that that one missing link of that confidence, comfort of coming to office is also solved. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, interesting. A lot of companies who had no plans to introduce are evaluating. Some of them have already introduced. Uh, how important? Uh, and you know, uh, I think one of the topics that is close to my heart. How important do you think was technology as in in the in you know in your overall uh, strategy? Yeah. Uh, because uh, I think you know if you really want to control what is happening. In a state, in a state where there is a lot of uncertainty, uh, it gets very, it gets very tedious uh, if you are really running everything manually. Yeah. So, uh, was technology an important part of your planning process, and then what led you to choosing the technology that you have? Yeah. No, I agree with you, and I think initially when we opened the offices, uh, you know, we didn't, you know, uh, we didn't use technology, and we realized, but you know, in the beginning. 
we were obviously you know very few people coming to offices so you know it was okay like you could manage it right because you had somebody who's spraying you yeah. somebody who's checking your temperature he's making a note of it so we realized that you know imagine tomorrow if a lot more people start coming to office then you know and which which eventually did happen so right now we are at 30% occupancy uh, what will happen how will you like how do you just manage all the crowd in the morning is because pretty much everybody comes around that time like you know so uh, that's when we felt that we needed to have something which was more scalable more long term you know which is which also gives uh, which just doesn't involve too much of you know like touching uh, you know getting because people also <laughs> like quite panicky right they don't want to be you know so that's when we you know uh, we thought that uh, we would use uh, work in sync uh, we introduced that as part of our strategy it, in fact it's a very important part of my return to work strategy that really gave me personally the confidence that uh you know i could manage this um uh, because what i mean if, you know just what work in sync does is you know uh, if every employee like is required to download this app and fill it fill out some information and the the app checks whether you are coming from a confinement zone or not that itself is like if you're coming from that red zone please don't come to office right so they know that you know that itself and obviously we have access to all of this information in the back end then they are the, the app also checks whether you 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 have the arog setu app which was actually in those days quite mandatory uh, even today i think it is yes it yeah is. still is uh, and, and then you know it kind of generates some and then you are required to book your seat like let so which means the admin knows how many people to expect in that particular day so that you know the admin is is kind of ready with to to receive those, those number of people in the office and then when you come in like you know you you need to kind of swipe you get a digi pass mm -hmm. which can be swiped and you also check your temperature so only once you have that you have a clearance to get into the office and this process itself is was the fact that it was like you know now i don't need to worry i mean if somebody is like not well for first of all it will stop you from coming to office if you are in a confinement zone right second is you know at the office if you you know uh, if you if you are finally in the office if your temperature is scanned uh, and if you are okay then you come otherwise you go back I, I, earlier all of this was being done manually by the security guards which i thought was not very efficient so it really took away a lot of um, pain from us uh, you know when we when uh, so so yes technology did and 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 like i said work in sync was a very important part of my strategy and um... Uh, i know as a chr you really uh, were leading this with the exact response for this entire project but what was the role that other teams played and I, this question actually in the two parts one is the first part is uh, who were the other teams that were involved in this entire decision making the, the entire project of implementing technology uh, a second part to that question is that uh, what were from your perspective what were the pain points for each of those teams that were involved i know as a chro you would probably be wanting to solve uh, some issues uh, or some areas with using technology what would the other functions and i'm just going to kind of preempt a little bit maybe you know maybe a facilities or an admin yeah. security maybe somebody else in the in the c suite who was involved in this so what what was it that you were hearing from various leaders various functions as yeah. issues that they want to solve yeah i think uh, i think it was an honestly if you ask me it was an overall just the whole strategy was trying to address an overall business issue right if you really think about it um we were trying to uh, we wanted to ensure safety we want to wanted to make sure that that our offices if ensure the safety of the employee we wanted to make sure that our offices were uh safe and smart and you know they were managed well we also wanted to ensure that you know we are not getting involved in unnecessary you know inefficient ways of working because that that itself was you know a big part because if it involves 20 people to just get one person inside the office then it's not making sense right. um and uh, and also i think you know somewhere i think it um, uh, using of technology uh, is is just uh, for us it was also one of the things to uh, for internally to to give people the confidence that listen you know see it's a, it's a progressive way of working right i mean it's not like it's not an archaic work i mean it, it's something that that we could also then globally go and go back and tell 
uh, to our uh, you know uh, colleagues in in the region in the global team that listen you know we been our our methods are very very safe and very foolproof and that is, that makes a lot of difference right so we were addressing multiple and getting back to office was obviously a very i mean it's a it's a choice that we consciously came together you know as a business and decided that listen this is something that we need to do because you know clearly this this at some point we'll have to do it so let's just be smart about it so you know uh, interestingly one of uh, our other clients who was using work in sync um, their india leadership is driving an entire global uh, return to office uh, plan yeah and uh, because they've india has been the first office to implement uh, work in sync i mean implement technology i mean they've implemented right. yeah. uh, they are now showcasing this to their other offices and giving them the confidence that listen you guys can manage the entire yeah. return to office program with so uh, next i mean my kind of how does how do you think this work in sync is going to mature within i mean uh, i know there are conversations we have with a lot of clients around integrating with a lot of their other systems right uh, some of the large organizations which have facilities which are running in millions of square feet they they have iot uh, applications to manage the facilities uh, some of them are talking to us how do you integrate with that some of some people are talking to us about integrating with hrms uh, one interesting conversation is actually making work in sync the source of truth around the entire employee uh office visit uh, yeah. um so multiple conversations i the question i have for you is that how do you see uh, as from a from a chro's lens uh, how do you see this particular work in sync uh, application really being able to help you further in as you scale up you know right now you've got a, a certain percentage a smaller percentage of people coming in as you scale back up as your other offices other locations also start opening up how do you see this uh, kind of scaling up maybe to other parts yeah of or you know of of the touch points that employees have sure so i think i think it's a good question because i i know that you know you guys are also kind of uh, keep adding interesting modules to your uh, to your product right so i know there was one that i was particularly interested in which is the you know the whole attendance bit right because today uh, we are not able to track that we don't know what the hell people are doing as in you know in, in the sense that we don't know whether uh, you know i mean it, it's we we all like i said last year we said that we were not going to be very rigid uh, but i think uh, uh, you know i think some time have to get yeah, yeah, some, yeah, get some method to this madness yeah. right yeah. so uh, so then having a having an having an attendance or a, a, a tracking mod you know app which is uh, you know which is easy to access from phone and wherever a person is or even laptop or wherever i know that you have something like that uh, and I've, and we've already had had some discussions around that and in fact your team has given me a demo on that um i think the other uh, module which is very interesting is the whole transport bit which we are right now not using but who's to say right who's to say um and i think the other way that you know we can uh, i think the other potential is let's like you said i mean if the, if a product like this is not available globally uh then you know why can't we offer it let's say, check with our global teams if they are interested in something like that and if if your pro product has potential to you know uh, scale to other markets then why not yeah so to be fair there are products available but you know they do only one small part of what working sync yeah. does at the moment so oh. again i i'm not wanting to make this a very uh, you know i don't want to make a this a sales pitch but uh, yes there are products available but they they don't do end to end the way of uh, the work yeah. uh, you know as we also recently introduced uh, you know how can you track uh, the sanitization of your desks because yeah. you know when you when you're doing when you're doing a, a desk a space management or hot desking whatever you want to call it uh, there are multiple users of the same desk so yeah. the concern and the confidence that you need to build into employees is that the desk he or she is is uh, sanitized now sanitized right mm. uh, then the other uh, uh, big uh, enhancement that you we've just introduced is the integration with meeting rooms okay. uh, interestingly uh, uh, a client of ours had they you know one very large global client uh, well they are client in india but they are a large global company uh, they are also looking at what should my office space do should my office space be for work 
or should my office space be for collaboration? Right? And they're talking of the future. Right? Yeah. Because they say work is happening from, from home. You know, we've all been through this one year. I don't yeah, think they're redefining the, the purpose or existence of, of the physical uh, workspace. Right? Right. Yeah. So when you talk of collaboration, you're talking of maybe more meeting rooms. Uh, yeah. How do you, you know, have access to meeting rooms? So that entire yeah. thought process, the entire way that a workplace is going to be viewed in the future is yeah. probably also changing. Uh, yeah. Which is very, which is true, absolutely true. And, and yeah, and I think to, then in that, then, then in that sense, then the, then the requirement of technology will also completely be redefined, right? Yeah. So what is your current, uh, for your employees, uh, are you, do you have some kind of a, uh, roster are you encouraging them to come in every day or do you i know you told me once that you come in on specific days of the week no now i come every day because you know i find i think i'm losing my mind at home so i i really feel like i need to come to office every day it's just very difficult to stay home um but we are like i said uh, we are now open five days a week um we have people coming in through the through the week so there is no restriction uh, but uh, we like i said i mean like I said, we are not, you know, because of the fact that public, you know, people are still not, you know, vaccinated and, you know, people still need to use public transport. Yes. Uh, I, I think it's right now we are running at a good, good 30% and we are very happy with that. And whenever we have uh, like reviews or client meetings, sometimes, sometimes internal presentations, then, uh, then we kind of uh, figure out ways to come uh, to walk office and, and, you know, meet. Uh, but on a regular basis, about 30 and offices are open and the people are using their apps to let us know uh, that they are coming so that we know what to expect. Right. Other than work in sync, are there any other tools that you are using to uh, manage this entire hybrid workplace? Uh, are there, you know, apart from just the fact of sanitized workplaces, are there any other SOPs that you had to uh, rewrite? Um, we, of course, we, I mean, honestly, I don't know if, if it's fair to say whether it's something that we did as part of the, you know, the whole uh, pandemic uh, situation, but we had already re redefined some of our policies in terms of work from home, flexi work hours, uh, you know, uh, so I don't know if that was necessarily an outcome of the, of the, you know, work from home situation, but we, we already have some of these. So uh, they were redefined this last year but I, not necessarily as an outcome of the of the pandemic. Okay. I'm now going to ask you two very specific questions uh, on work in sync. I know you've, you've mentioned this in some parts uh, so already so far, uh, but if you can probably name the top two or top three pain points, specific pain points that you were looking to solve as you were exploring uh, in your technology solutions such as work in sync, uh, what were the top two, three uh, pain points uh, that you were trying to, uh, um, you know, address? Yeah, I think two. Okay, one was my biggest concern was adoption. Okay, because I'm, uh, by the way, I'm in the advertising space, so people just people are all rock stars, right? Nobody does anything you want them to do. So uh, for me, that was a big one. But you know what? Surprisingly, everybody adopted it. Everybody, right? Right from the CEO to like you know the last person like a you know peon uh, who is required to use it. So uh, adoption was my my concern was nobody is going to use it. We'll get it. And the other is I, I was concerned if my boss would be willing to spend money uh, you know in, in in under these circumstances. But he clearly saw value. You know it was it took me like literally a five minute presentation and you know he understood the value of doing something like that. So those were my two concerns. Uh, I and of course, when I say adoption, not only downloading the app, but actually taking the effort to, you know, take your picture and you know, uh, using it, right? So, but honestly, um, the moment maybe maybe it took me like maybe a couple of reminders, a couple of mails, and then everybody was kind of uh, okay. using it. So okay, yeah. So you know, adoption is one uh, one thing that is uh, that a lot of companies. Uh, have to really take a hard stand on. Yeah, yeah. Some of them, tough. yeah, some of them, yeah, exactly, be tough. Some of them, you know, introduce policies, some of them introduce disciplinary action. Uh, I'm presuming you didn't have to do that. Some gate, I didn't have to do that. Great yeah. ended up uh, doing it. 
you know yeah no I, honestly the buy in from the leaders was so strong you know they just because you know what everybody is was worried everybody was worried so i anything that could uh, just make it a little more safer i think people were willing to do it you know so and how's the and i know this is uh, this is uh, uh, you know i'm putting you on the spot but how is the feedback so far on the usage i mean do you have any feedback we we've, we've got all great feedback from you right but i still do want to ask this question is there is there feedback that you get from your exist from from users on any particular area in any particular area uh no nothing uh, nothing to be nothing uh, specific um you know i haven't consciously i'll be honest i haven't consciously gone seeking uh, feedback uh, but i think that uh, nobody has complained so far so i'm seeing that as a bad sign a good sign good sign good yeah. uh, is there uh, if i had to if i had to ask you one feature of work in sync which you want to highlight has uh, contributed the most towards solving your entire return to office strategy as well as pain point as any particular pain point that one feature that you think has really helped you uh, i think it i mean it's obvious i think the two features one is the uh, the the digi pass right. uh, which needs to be scanned right uh, and then the temperature screening because it all happens like you know remotely somebody can come and do it you don't need anybody around them um and and the fact that you know all of this automatically gets kind of you know somewhere in your system and you know as admin in hr all of us have access to it so there's a lot of insights and data that we get out of it so we have a lot more top level uh, you know understanding of what's going on which and and it it significantly reduced the manual intervention for us that for me was like it's an efficiency uh, uh the efficiency it brought out was probably the best thing uh i'll i'll quickly jump there there are some questions that have come in one question i know you already addressed it but maybe in case you want to kind of you know address it once again uh you did show us the survey but the question is what are the key concerns uh, for the employees when they were asked to work from office i think that uh, people you know i think people were in general afraid of the of covid right uh, because at that point people we didn't really know how things uh when when this is going away is there a cure is there a vaccine right so i think people just were afraid to travel using public transport they were afraid to interact with people uh, who were traveling by public transport they were in general afraid to interact with people and come face to face i think they 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 were very very concerned about that uh like i said we never really forced anybody it was always very very voluntary and which which is why people had that thank god you know we don't have to we are not forced to come to office okay uh there's one more question uh, that I, i know you've already answered this but you know you may just want to repeat a little bit of what you you said earlier how easy was it to uh, how was how easy was it to adopt the solution by your employees how receptive were they and or did you face any resistance uh, the, uh what solution are we, are we talking about sumit is it uh, uh, the 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 you app or in general yeah. the the protocol I think, i think he meant he means the work and sync solution because we spoke about adoption so i think the it's about yeah. no i i like i said i think the initial uh, the lethargy the laziness but eventually when you know just a like like i said a couple of emails and you know it was all being managed uh, you know uh, the nobody resisted it because everybody believed in it so people were not resisting it because they said oh this is not useful right everybody knew it was going to help them right and when it comes to people's own life and health i think people are a little more uh you know adoptive more 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 cooperative so not so much so there's a question from uh, ajun it uh, and the, i think the question is actually more to me and i will answer but i first want to get your point of view it says what is the efficacy that you have for the protection of personal information ppi of the associates who are using the work and sync app i will answer that but i first want to get your point of view as a chro who you know who is really the owner of your entire employee database uh did you have any concerns around personal information uh you know being available to the work in singapore i think we, i think we took care of that right we we addressed it, got it addressed uh through all sorts of ndas that we signed uh you know and i think uh, 
uh, you know, we our, our agreement was very, very careful about all of those uh, things. So I think legally we were, see, when you're using products like these, uh, obviously, you know, you have to share uh, uh, personal information. Honestly, you don't have a choice. But uh, but obviously, then some of the clauses in the in the in the you know in the contract and 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 of course the NDA that kind of protects uh, us and that gives us the confidence. So you right. know. Uh, right. So Aju, I'll just I'll I'll respond to it from uh, from our perspective, the company which actually uh, manages and runs the Workensing app. Um, apart from uh, being an ISO certified ISO twenty seven thousand one certified organization. Uh, the, the 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 database it's it's a it's a cloud solution. Uh, the access to the database is extremely uh, is is actually extremely limited. Uh, uh, the the entire environment that we've built around uh, the employee database is uh, is protected. We have rigorous infosec processes. Uh, we have periodic uh, 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 you know uh, periodic certifications that are in place to ensure that. The data that we are holding is uh, is is uh, is not breached, and just to give you uh, a, a couple of data points more, uh, while working sync is something that we introduced last year, uh, we've been managing employee database uh, for over 150 large uh, enterprises uh, over the past uh, uh, 11 years now. Um, not in the world so far, we haven't had a single data breach because of all the stringent measures that. We have in place, as well as infosec processes that we run through. A lot of our very um, demanding uh, banking and financial clients have also put us to the test through their own, own infosec processes. Um, we'll be happy, Aju, to kind of dive deeper into this uh, discussion with you uh, sometime. You know, post this uh, uh, post this uh, chat, and maybe give you that additional confidence in you know what are the steps we take. Uh, it's not a. It's not necessarily a very short answer. I could, you know, we could get into the details of how we ensure there is there is complete data protection. Uh, there's one more question that's come up actually in uh, Q and A in the chat column. If you see, it says, uh, "Was art was RPO driven by employees wanting to come back to the office or the organization wanting to bring employees back to office?" Um. I think it was driven by, uh, listen, we, we didn't really, uh, we were not like, you know, we have to bring back employees. I think we were never in that, uh, in that mode. We did the survey, okay? I think for us, which is the reason we did the survey because we wanted to hear people and understand what they are thinking, what do they want? And we sense that a lot of people want to come, but obviously they cannot come right? because of the public transport challenge. So for us, it was more on, um, and, and we have always been very, very, you know, approach is very clear. We wanted that employees, because we knew, knew that some was, most of them were struggling in, in their homes with smaller spaces and, and, you know, people were really feeling stuck at home, tired of Zoom calls. We said, you know what, our objective is really to provide employees a space which is safe and whenever they want to come, whether they want to be part of a meeting or they just want to, you know, uh, do their work one day peacefully, or, uh, you know, we said that let's make this space available because the space is there, you know, so it's not going, it's not like we gave away our offices, right, the space is there. So people have that option, they can come and work out of the office, right, so that was the whole plan, it was driven by a combination of what we heard people say in their survey and all and then we responded to what people said and we said let's let's just create that comfort for people that's that was our intention uh the question is very again another very interesting question and i will try and ask while the question is there but i'll try and ask it in my own way uh, what do you think the future is does is Havas really looking at 100 percent of the employees coming back to office or do you think a hybrid work model is the future, you know, a transition between a work from home and work from office uh, model. Yeah. What's your point of view? And I'd like to, I'd like to also hear what, what are you hearing from your global colleagues? Yeah. I think, uh, I think more and more, it looks like it's going to be hybrid. Okay. Uh, because, you know, we've possibly broken all the, all the, you know, 
all the myths around you know not being able to do anything from home right or not being able to do everything from home i think today nobody can say that and uh, you you know like i said in our case we've also made pitches to the client in, on zoom calls and we won businesses also because of those pitches so that was probably the you know so all that is happening so it's breaking the myth uh, so today nobody can say that like for example right today i want to hire somebody in my hr team and uh, earlier i you know the business leader would say no listen i need this person to be with me in delhi but you know today i'll say no you know what i have this really nice person in bangalore and uh, uh, you know can he tell me that listen this arrangement won't work no he can't tell me that right so i'm just, i think it's going to be more and more hybrid i think uh, you know uh, people will come to offices more for collaboration for reviews for discussions uh, you know who's to say yeah in 2022 or 23 when our you know leases go get over what kind of a model are we thinking it's quite possible that we might also come come back to smaller office spaces uh, you know people can work from home like like i'm i'm literally thinking that i need to get away for 10 days maybe i'll just go to dharamshala and work from there for 10 days you know i'm thinking and my boss is saying superb here yeah, take some money <laughs> so i'm just saying this kind of model will come into place that's my that's my thing you have a very kind boss yes i uh, okay uh, you know i know we are all, almost out of time we got over four minutes left but i do want to uh, show a, a very quick 90 second uh, video let me uh, share my screen this is uh, this is really to give a very quick uh, update uh, i mean give people a sense of what the what the tool is about uh, just in a second i hope my screen is visible oh, yeah it is <laughs> this is really about you know how you rostering yourself you are putting in a login shift let's the desk booking you can choose the desk you want to book you can choose a desk which is close to a colleague you can choose the amenities you want in sync agent what can i do for you today book me a seat for thursday 9 am your booking is successful seat a1 is reserved for you in crr floor 1 for the selected dates so uh, you know essentially it was a very quick very very quick uh, snapshot of what uh, the app can do for you and i you know you're already using uh, a lot of this uh, the access so just like uh, the school bus takes you to school uh, so we essentially you take your parents to office and back sorry about that <laughs> um so yeah so basically it's it's you know it kind of showed the use cases that you are already using uh what we've introduced uh you know recently is the entire google assistant uh, uh availability you know while uh, you know I, our ceo dipesh cycles to office and oh. he books he books a seat while he's cycling you know talking to the google assistant Mm. So, uh, how cool is that yeah so you know it kind of it, it's a it's an ever evolving uh, application uh, in fact i think it will it is fair one day if we probably do a demo for you every month because we're adding features and functionalities uh, almost every month uh, okay i know we are out of the hour um, uh, i don't see any more questions but if uh, folks if you do have questions feel free to write to us 
uh, we have your we have your uh, coordinates. Uh, we will be reaching out to you separately. And in case we can share any more details, any more uh, data around work in sync or the entire return to office strategy, there are multiple uh, blogs available, uh, white papers, thought papers, uh, and reports available on our website. Uh, feel free to visit, download, or if you have a specific uh, specific question, write back to us. Most importantly, if you are keen to know more about work in sync, uh, write to us. You can access it through the website, or you could write to us directly. Uh, and we would set up a demo for you and take you through exactly what how Working Sync can help you with your entire return to office uh, program. Vandana, thank you so much. We deeply, deeply appreciate you as a client, and more importantly, the 60 minutes that you've spent with us. I know it's not just the 60 minutes. There was a little bit of prep that we also did prior to uh, the chat. So we really appreciate all this time. Uh, I do owe you a coffee sometime soon, Vandana, sure. and uh, we will we will try and do that. Uh, with very, very quickly, maybe next week itself. Absolutely. Right? Uh, to everybody else, thank you so much for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure. I hope uh, this was interesting and insightful for you, like I said in the beginning. And uh, watch out for more of such series. Uh, this was the first where we, we are speaking to a senior uh, leader from our client uh, from a client list. We do intend uh, doing more of these with in the next uh, in the next month. Uh, watch out for updates through social media and other campaigns that we run. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Vandana. Have Thank a happy, you. wonderful evening. Have a wonderful weekend. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.